Today on Dora Hope, our goal to please God. I will give her vineyards there, and the valley of suffering for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Rhonda Lazert Ministries welcomes you to the Door of Hope. Welcome to Door of Hope. It's a pleasure to be with you. We don't often think that, you know, one of the aims and goals of our life is to please God. Uh, it's in throughout Scripture. Uh, to please Him. And that's what our journey and growth and development should be from our hearts, is that we want to please our Lord and walk in His ways, uh, walk guided and directed by His Holy Spirit. There's so many portions of Scripture that say that. Uh, Colossians 3, so if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hid, hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever is in your earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. See that you have stripped the old self with the practices and have closed yourselves with a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of the Creator. So it's, it's true. There, you know, how often have we uh, really asked ourselves or asked God in our prayer time, uh, Lord, is my life pleasing to you? Uh, am I doing that which pleases you? Set our mind on heavenly things. Sometimes we do that so that we can obtain stuff. And pleasing God isn't part of that mindset at all. And yet uh, we hear of King David. He was a man after God's own heart. And it isn't that he was faultless, uh, but he loved God and he served God. I, I think of that dance he did uh, when they took the city. And Michaela's wife was embarrassed uh, and she was sent to the tower because of it. But he danced before the Lord, he pleased God. And that was David, a man after God's own heart. And so is that our first, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy mind, soul, and thy neighbor as thyself. And with this, it said that all the commandments are fulfilled. Because if we please God, then we are guided by his Holy Spirit. And uh, we just think and live and do and receive differently. Uh, that we can say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. The, our Father, the Lord's Prayer, is just that perfect model uh, that we have for instruction, not my will, but your will be done. And we know that uh, Christ himself at Calvary, the Gethsemane Prayer, which is the highest faith prayer we have in recorded scripture, uh, he said, let this cup pass from me. He meaning Jesus just before his death, the crucifixion, but nevertheless thy will. And I know that if we, we are worried about getting it right with the many complicated scriptures uh, and all that, that's there, uh, yet it can be simplified, loving the Lord God with our whole heart and our neighbor as ourselves. And that desire uh, that flows from our inner being not to get more from God, not to have this or that, or uh, be somebody, uh, but to actually just please Him, to set our mind on heavenly things, 
not on earthly things. The book of Colossians is beautiful with those verses. Do not therefore abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward for you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Yet in a little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. So we have these verses in the book of Hebrews and it carries on in the 11th chapter and without faith, it's impossible to please God for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So we have from our hearts uh, the call to please him, to pray sincerely and deeply from within, Lord, not, not my will, but your will be done. And we'll find ourselves on a path that we wouldn't choose, uh, but a path that works a path that I honestly believe of life out of death. Uh, know ye not, if you die, you shall live also. And I honestly believe Newton's law for every equal or negative reaction, there's an equal positive reaction. And it says of Christ Jesus, before he descends to the highest heaven, he descends to the lower parts of the earth. He descended to the lower parts and now is seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And I believe that it is life out of death. Uh, the journey in the Song of Solomon is called Mountains of Bether. Bether means to die, to suffer. And then you, and they're plural, there's more than one. So if you've encountered some negative things in your life, a lot of negative things, knowing that all things do work together for good to those who love God are called according to his purpose. And the last series of Mountains, which is the cover of The Oil of Joy, um, that cover uh, has the gazelle leaping upon the mountain of spices. Make haste, my beloved, upon the mountain of spices. So if we go down uh, with God's will, some of it is our own making, but God still, as I, I shared last week, he not only forgives us, but he forget, forgets our iniquities, I will remember no more our trespasses. So if we go down, all things work together for good to those who love God are called according to his purpose. So if we go down, we can be assured that we will go up. And the guarantee of all of that is uh, the mountain of spices, leaping and dancing and praising God. We do not always live in the valley, but we will leap upon the mountain top. That's the gospel. It's called resurrection life. We know that we too will rise again because our Savior rose from the dead. So we have that guarantee of his death and resurrection. It then becomes ours that we rise with him. And it says we're seated together in glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But the problem is not that then. The problem is now, how then shall we live? How, how can we recognize uh, the language of the Spirit, the signs of the Spirit in our journey? Can we be confident enough to pray, Lord, not my will, but your will be done? Can we have faith enough, the just shall live by faith, to realize that God will redeem all sorrow, all trials, all tribulations, not just in uh, the world to come, but even in this life. And that's what puts a song in our heart, for we have not uh, believed in some cunningly devised fable, but we have believed in the power and the glory and majesty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews goes on, and without faith it's impossible to please him, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and rewards those who seek him. And then we go on to see that Noah, by faith Noah warned by God about events and yet unseen respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that it is in accordance with faith. And Abraham, the same thing, obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He set out not knowing where he was 
going because he considered him faithful who had promised. Faithful who has promised. God will fulfill those promises that he has given to us in Christ Jesus, and it's an individual path, and it's a collective path. And somehow I think we all need to tune our ears a little more, uh, focus our sights on the majesty, the glory that God has prepared for those who know him, and that God walks among us. He is our Lord, our Savior, our Christ, and in knowing him, we do those great exploits by the power of his Holy Spirit. I had read last week about what we see as temporary, but what we cannot see is eternal. And it goes on to say, for we know that if this earthly tent we live in is being destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be closed with our heavenly dwelling heavenly dwelling, if indeed when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to further clothe, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. He, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the spirit as a guarantee and then we walk, we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, and the prayer upon our hearts, with your Lord, your will, and not my will be done. And I think it clears up a lot of the confusion and the lack of hearing in our heads, because we get mixed up. We get self in there, and we have these clouds, but we pray that prayer. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. I honestly believe uh, that a clarity comes and we have then uh, that capacity enlarged to hear his voice and to walk as children of the light, children of the spirit, hearing the voice of God. Because if we don't have God's voice speaking to us, I don't mean apparitions standing in front of us, but God's voice speaking to us, my sheep hear my voice, uh, how can we walk if we have no instruction on a day-to-day -day course? And I notice the uh, big things in my life um, and many of the blessings that came out of that act of faith uh, was I first heard the voice of God. I first, something happened, you have a dream. Uh, I fought against some of the dreams um, and yet others were there, I wondered. Uh, yes, but where did that come from? But as I grew in his grace and knowledge, I began to uh, see that I don't have them all the time, uh, but uh, occasionally I'll have a dream, and uh, sure enough, uh, that dream has the instruction and the direction and the leading that I need. My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, they're higher. And we, as children of the Spirit, we're entitled to dream dreams, to hear God's voice, to be directed of Him, to walk a path where we don't stumble, we don't have to have it all figured out, because we'll never be able to do that, but we are led. The promise of being children of the Spirit is that we are led of the Spirit, and that's why we don't stumble, because we are led. And there are just times uh, it says that the unsaved walk in darkness and stumble and do not comprehend uh, the voice of God or herein is the path, walk ye in it. So what a great thing that we have uh, that guarantee that if from our hearts our desire is to please him, uh, that uh, things work out and we do receive and can actually leap, dance, and praise him and leap upon the mountain of spices. Make haste, my beloved, upon the mountain of spices. It's, it's just this glory. It's so many uh, passages that guarantee ourselves. It says, devote yourself to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well. God will open to us a door for the word that we may declare the mystery of Christ, 
for which I am in prison, so I might reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know what you ought to answer everyone, a faithful minister. And it just continues on and on, uh, the Holy Spirit testifying uh, that we ha can consider him faithful to what he has promised. The just shall live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who thinks back. So maybe, maybe the best prayer we can pray is that Gethsemane prayer, I believe it. Father, not my will, but your will be done and that prayer where we individually pray that prayer of faith, Lord, may my uh, life please you. Uh, may I be an instrument of your glory, your praise, your honor, to testify of the goodness and mercy of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, it's, after you hear the preach, you're in church, you fellowship, uh, you're on that one-to-one -one with God. You know, I remember Derek Prince saying, you can't get lost in the shuffle. Uh, it's one-to-one. -one. The new and living way, the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Uh, we don't approach God just as a collective group, which is what church is all about, but we approach him one-to-one. -one. And uh, to have that intimate relationship with God, uh, where we see him, we hear his voice, we're led of his spirit, and to know that it works, that it succeeds. Uh, many years ago, one of the first uh, books I had read was, of testimony was Catherine Marshall's, and she was struck down with tuberculosis, I believe. Uh, had a very small child, two or under, and uh, just was in bed for more than 10 years. And praying and praying, a very marvelous husband, and she, he died at quite a young age, and she, uh, went on to live after his death and to uh, marry again and to write these powerful books, one of them his testimonial. But she uh, was plugged in, they were plugged in. He was a good pastor um, and uh, plugged in and her account was one night with this TB never getting, never improving and the angel of the Lord uh, uh, stood at the end of her bed, didn't say anything to her and yet, uh, after that uh, moment in time, she began to be healed and steadily improved. And I think so often you read scriptures, they gather together in one accord, and they prayed. They prayed daily, they prayed with the word, they prayed continually. And there was a reason they were gathering, uh, because they were receiving. They were receiving something of God's spirit. They were uh, gathering to hear his voice, uh, to please him, to worship him, because worship is a, a wonderful thing we do when we, it's a high thing. We worship holy, holy, holy. And we gather together to daily, in one accord, to, to meet, to fellowship, but also to please him. And so that we together as a group may hear the voice of the Spirit, we may be empowered, energized by his, the laying on of hands by his Holy Spirit. And uh, we might, uh, you know, one, it says, you know, one has this, a hymn and one a song and one a praise. I know during the charismatic renewal, I had, I've always been a church goer, but it was more top down and we sat and listened. And that charismatic renewal in the early 70s was the first time you gathered in homes or in a prayer room and we were all participating and people were sharing and I was so fascinated by uh, the things that people said and the instruction that was there and how it helped me in my daily walk and life. They would, uh, you know, it seemed that they would say the very thing I needed to hear uh, to confirm or to give me that encouragement of heart and uh, it was a different focus. We met to please God, to give testimony of God's grace and to encourage one another by his grace and might and power and not shrink back, not shrink back, but you know, to uh, just continue moving forward, to pressing forward 
and uh, it, it just seemed uh, so much uh, more fun than anything else we could come up with because the energy of God's Holy Spirit, that children of light, that divine light, those words, and that true fellowship of the body of Christ. Uh, and, you know, I go to a church where I experience that. Uh, it's there, uh, that fellowship before him, uh, hearing, you know, I always think it's, what a treat. The pastor has to spend the week on the message. I get to sit and listen to what he's uh, pouring and pondering through all week long. I get the, the, the goodies just by sitting there and listening uh, to what the Spirit of God is saying to him and then others joining in on that same plant. It says, one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. So we're told to keep keeping on. My righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that were not visible. And then it says of Sarah, she was barren, but he considered himself faithful who had promised. Considered himself faithful, endure trials for the sake of discipline, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness, that we may please him, that we walk before him in the body of Christ, because we all fit into that by his grace and mercy. Oh, that will be glory for me. Father God, we bow before you uh, to honor you, to pray that prayer from our hearts that our lives would please you, that we would easily say, not my will, but your will be done. And that you would give us the capacity, the ears to hear your word, your will, whether in dreams or however you so choose, Lord, may you clear that line so that we might hear and receive. For we know, Lord, you say it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Hallelujah. We thank Jesus Christ for opening the new and living way. And the call of the Spirit is to simply walk in it, pleasing thee, saying, not my will, but your will be done, O Lord. Amen and amen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing, whose Calvary's tied. There's wonderful power in the blood. And there is power, power. the blood of the Lamb, and there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's 
wonderful power in the blood. And there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. And there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. And would you live daily as praises to bring? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Of the land, and there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great week. We're here to pray with you and walk in that newness life by his grace and mercy and to please him. Amen and amen and amen. We trust this program has been a door of hope for you, and we encourage you to call the prayer line. Door of Hope is entirely viewer-supported. It is your financial gifts that allow Rhonda Lazert to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax-deductible.